So this is the Sony Alpha A33 and uh, it looks like a DSLR but this is actually not a DSLR. Sony calls this a, an, an SLT and SLT basically stands for Single Lens Translucent. And the whole idea is that in a DSLR you actually have a little mirror and when you take the picture the mirror kind of flips up and allows the light to enter the sensor which is kind of like the, the film of the camera. Whereas in an SLT you got a translucent mirror that allows half the light to enter the camera's sensor and the other half to go upwards to a tiny little sensor on the top where you know it actually feeds it to um, a little tiny LCD screen inside here so basically this is actually using an electronic viewfinder uh, normal DSLRs are optical viewfinders so basically you see the light that comes straight out of the lens whereas in this case you're looking at a tiny little LCD screen which is actually quite high resolution LCD screen so you don't see it's not really pixelated when you look it through the, the little viewfinder here. So what is an SLT, what is the advantages of actually having a translucent mirror? Well, two advantages. One of them is that you know it has much faster autofocus and um, the, it's sort of like, a, they call it a full-time autofocus and the advantages are, you know, in terms of it will help in taking pictures but I think one of the features that it will help most is in video taking, right? The ability to actually be able to autofocus all the time during video taking is actually uh, kind of a big deal and um, the other thing is of course that if you're if since this is now an electronic viewfinder you can actually see a lot more information when you look through the eyepiece compared to an optical viewfinder right so you'll be able to see things like the, the histogram you'll be able to actually preview the photo after it's taken without actually removing your eyes from the electronic viewfinder you can go through menus you can actually take a look at just settings uh, your white balancing you'll be able to see all those things through the electronic viewfinder which you wouldn't have been able to do in an optical viewfinder. So that's that's kind of what is an SLT and what this camera is, you know, what is the whole big deal about this particular camera. Let's talk about the, the hardware itself. So um, so right up here you got the, the dials basically, you got the, the, the standard stuff and including of course you have here, um, this is the panorama and the sweet panorama which we found on the Sony Alpha NEX3 as well. Scene selection Right, and of course the intelligent auto, which is another feature that was brought over from the Alpha NEX series. Okay, on this side, uh, we got some buttons here: dynamic range, finder LCD. So you switch between the viewfinder to the LCD. The on/off switch. This is the dial to allow, let you navigate through settings as well as the menu. All right, this is the movie record button. Again, very much like the Alpha NEX. So in, regardless of what mode you are in, you just hit the movie button and you start recording video. Okay, so uh, the, all the setting buttons. So you, one of the things you notice right now is that this camera is like the big version of uh, an NEX, right? And the Sony Alpha NEX, 30, um, NEX3, if you watched our video, was all about software. It's all about all the cool features, a lot of intelligence, a lot of the, because of the CPU inside there. And one of the biggest complaints with the Alpha NEX3 was that you wouldn't be able to change all these settings unless you go through a menu. And this guy has all those stuff, but they put, move them all outside to physical dials and buttons, which is what professional photographers would actually want, while at the same time still maintaining some of the intelligence. So meaning, if you actually turn on the camera, and uh, you look through right here, this is the auto intelligence. So let's see if I grab, I grab something, say the lens cap, for example, right? And I actually zoom it in. And uh, you can see, right, just like it, it did on the Alpha N uh, NEX, it was able to automatically detect uh, proper scenes and then adjust accordingly for that. So, you know, this is a bit like, it's like an NEX3, but instead of um, a merge between a point and shoot and a camera, this one is actually more of a, a merge between, uh, you know, intelligence and a DSLR. So that is the big deal about this camera. So, of course, you, we talked about the, um, the electronic viewfinder. You should probably not be able to see much, but you can kind of tell that there's a um, there's a little oh, tiny little TV screen, <laughs> not TV screen, an LCD screen inside there. And um, the other features will be this little uh, display, which allows you to flip around. So you know, which lets you take pictures in in um, in kind of uh, angles that are, are hard to get normally. Basically, for example, you do this if you want to take pictures that are really high, so you raise this camera above your head, or take pictures that are below your head. And you can actually take self-portrait photos by doing this. This is something that the the Alpha NEX series could not actually do. And uh, so you got the flash right up here. 
got the the lens. This is an eighteen, a, a standard eighteen fifty five lens, and this is using the alpha mount, right? Not the E mount. So this is the other advantage. So that means that you can basically install Sony's full range of lenses. And uh, let's take a look what else you got here. You got the remote, so you can see right now that all the advanced stuff is all here already. You got the remote control connectors. You have the microphone. You can plug in a microphone for video, which is great. You got HDMI and USB. This is pretty standard. So yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's this is a full-fledged DSLR type of camera. This is a full-fledged uh, camera like professionals would actually prefer, since you know all sorts, all sorts of connectors, all sorts of dials and switches that you can actually find on this particular camera. So, Farnelli, tell us a little bit about the pictures that you can actually take with this. How has it been so far? Well, like you said, the um, the SLT really helps. So, so this one, um, the 33, has a frame rate of uh, 7 frames per second, yep. and the Alpha A55 has a frame rate of 10 frames per second, which is equivalent to the 1D Mark IV um, Canon's most expensive camera. Um, and that is of course due to the um, translucent technology and that really turned out um, good in my photos. The thing about it is that you can't escape the grain for... Uh, this is an APS-C sensor by the way, so I'm quite surprised that um, at 1006 it already shows up with so much grain. Um, but... So you're talking about the ISO right here, so I'm just switch this to uh, the program mode and let's do we so we can kind of take a look what kind of ISO settings. Mm. And so the, the highest you can go is uh, 12,800, 12, which is, which is I, if I'm not wrong, this was the same as the the uh, Sony Alpha NEX series as well. Yeah, so pretty high ISO. Mm. But so, but I would say um, if you want to use your your photos for not necessarily commercial, but you want it to look professional, um, you can only go up to 800, and then which is really in 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 um in a low light setting, and considering your your translucent technology, it's really not going to be helpful. Mm. Yeah, you, you know you can only take decent photos from 1006 onwards, which uh, is all right for kind of smaller screens, but once you get to HD class screens. The, the green really kind of shows up. Mm -hmm. So, so meaning that even though it, it it's so I mean one of the things that it does have though uh, that I know it's that it has it has this uh, so under scene selection. By the way, if you notice right, that the menus are as descriptive as they were on the the Alpha NEX, mm, which is really good. Which is good. So for, for for people who are new, so let me just hit down to the uh, the med, oops scene selection and uh, oops. Blah. And so they have this thing called the handheld twilight, which uh, we talked about before. And basically, what it does is that it takes several pictures in low light, and it kind of post processes it to actually allow uh, pictures to kind of look better. So mm -hmm. um, the it's lesser grain. Actually, uh, it, it's um, sort of an auto HDR. Oh yeah, yeah, some sort of. It's yeah. a bit like the same, a bit about the same concept as it's HDR. The same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's just taking um, the same picture at different uh, exposures and then combining them to get an optimum range. Mm -hmm. of exposures when needed so this is the, the, the result of it not that yeah. the light here is very low <laughs> but you know uh, I think you kind of you, you can get the idea mm. basically mm. yeah and uh, so another thing that it does is that it records HD video of course um, you know ABC HD and this one goes up to 1080p uh, but I have the same problem with this particular camera in terms of at least the, the, the spec wise uh, as the NEX5 which is that you can only you can only choose um, 1080p as a setting. You know you can't actually choose 720p. Yeah, which, which is, is yeah. really weird because I think most prof most um, amateur video filmmakers would want to go would have to go beyond 720. Yeah, that's right. So just 1080 is just way too big for production for for loading and stuff like that. So yeah, so you can't actually set change the setting for for the video on this mm. particular camera. And then the other thing was that actually was quite well known, which is that you can't actually take more than like seven minutes worth of video yeah. on this camera well, because the sensor kind of overheats. <laughs> yeah, it's either that it's either the sensor overheating or or um or the companies have especially this is especially in um, I think European countries they have to uh, follow guidelines which you know one of the guidelines is I think you can't film for more than either ten or thirty minutes. If you do more than that, then it's considered as a 
a camcorder class of uh, electronics, which is uh, like I don't know a oh. whole different. Okay. Texting. I did not know that. Yeah. That's very interesting. Mm. Yeah. And uh, also another thing to know is that because this is a Sony camera, so there's a bit of proprietary stuff here. So it's not a bit, it's a lot. Uh, okay, a lot of proprietary stuff. So if you can see up here, let me just get this to focus. The 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 hot the shoe. hot shoe for the flash is a proprietary hot shoe. So it's it's something that only Sony uses. So you can't just whip any flash that you purchase and put it up there. You need to buy one specifically for, for this class of cameras. Um speaking of that, right, again just wanted to mention that this camera actually supports both uh, SD as well as memory stick. How long have they been supporting SD? Um, I'm not sure, but I think it was a quite a recent next, thing, probably. Next, uh, um, I think even before the next, they've been supporting SD cards already, yeah. so which is a good thing. But yeah, so at least you can, you, you know, for those people who have been a bit skeptical about that, you can actually put SD cards into this particular camera. So yeah, um, hopefully we can put up some pictures to show you hopefully, you know, uh, of some of the qualities that you can actually take with this particular camera. And uh, otherwise, you know, thanks for watching this particular video. This was the Sony Alpha, Sony Alpha A33, www.tech65.org, that is our address. And um, yep, thanks for watching. See you then. Goodbye. Bye.